goodness, April Fool's Day is here, and we have not one but two guests joining us from the amazing state of Texas. We've got Central Heights ISD, Tracy McCown and Lesben Sanchez are joining us to talk a little bit about their tech aid position and how students are helping with storytelling in Central Heights. So you are going to learn all about this program that is a pass fail. Um, it's a it's a class that that students can take and you'll learn about the responsibilities of what they're producing from a lesbian. So there's a lot of things that she's creating for social media, in addition to some other tech uh, related responsibilities. Um, but I was talking with Tracy a little bit ago. She is a member in our membership community and I was learning a little bit and I'm like, Tracy, I got to get you on this podcast. Um, she actually has a school phone that her tech aides use when they go out to collect content. So sometimes we talk about giving kids access and being, you know, scared about that. Well, she just has a school phone that they check out and they can do um, some storytelling with that. Uh, Alespin's going to share her favorite um, like piece of content that she has created so far. And then if you are struggling to get staff content, wait until you hear Tracy's idea, which has gotten her in six weeks over 75 submissions from two of her schools, okay? So if you are struggling with content, learn from her in this uh, podcast interview. And I do have to just say before we get to the K-12 PR tip for today, today is the last day to submit your nom self-nominations for our Golden Gribble Awards. Yes, we have our own social media awards that we hand out every day or every year, not every day, every year uh, in May on School Communicators Day. So I'll be going live. I believe it's on May 10th this year. I'll be going live to announce our winners and it's a great time to learn. But if you want to be considered for one of the coveted uh, Golden Gribble Awards, you need to submit your application today. And you can submit into up to three categories, things like uh, Instagram Idol Award or overall Twitter, um, maybe LinkedIn, and maybe you have a great video, short video campaign, um, you know, a, a referendum or a bond vote. Um, there's a lot of categories there. So check that out. I've got it linked in the show notes for the contest, but today's the last day that you can submit and it costs you $0 to do it. Yes, it's a free free uh, award that you can submit for. So um, jump in there and now let's get to today's K-12 PR tip. All right, today's K-12 PR tip is all about your hook on your reel or your TikTok video. Okay, what I mean by hook is basically the first one to two seconds of your video are really important in order to catch people's attention while they are scrolling through their reels or their TikToks, okay? So um, there's eight top hooks, hook ideas when it comes to creating your reel or your TikTok video, and it is not your general intro and your logo, and that is not gonna catch people's attention. Number one, body movement where you just have to watch to see what happens next. How many times on your own do you see somebody like starting to do a flip or it looks like they're gonna fall and you just have to see what happens next. So think about that when you're creating your reel. Number two, the words, wait for it. Like, you know, because then they know that there's something that's gonna happen at the end of this video with something funny or dramatic. So that the, just putting the words, wait for it right on the front of your video will help. Number three, watch this video if you love hashtag New Auburn athletes or watch this video if you were in FFA in high school. Watch this video if you want to see our teachers get pied in the face. It's some kind of statement that tells them what they're going to see and that is enough to draw in their attention. Number four, mascot, your school mascot or any students in uniform. I think it helps you stand out from other videos. So using that school mascot or a student in uniform will be great. Um, number five is just breaking news. If you have a building update, if you have a brand reveal, if you have a big win 
and you can come on and do a breaking news type of update, you're going to get more views. Um, any Number six, any type of competition, like a sport or a game. Sometimes you're doing like um, rock, paper, scissors, and there's a little obstacle course or something. People tend to want to see what happens, okay? Um, number seven, why is no one talking about our CTE programs? Or why is no one talking about kindergarten sign up? Why is no one talking about our quiz bowl championship? Okay. These are ideas uh, to catch people's attention. And number eight, any kind of dramatic facial expression or movement. Again, we talked about number one being body movement, but if you have a dramatic facial expression or something that's happening, that is going to grab some attention. So those are my top eight hook ideas when it comes to using Instagram reels. We're going to talk about Instagram reels today with Elispin and Tracy. So let's get to the episode. Here we go. It might be April Fool's Day, but this is no joke right here. We are really excited. We've got two amazing guests joining us today from Texas. Um, I've got to bring up my notes here. We've got Tracy uh, uh, from the Instructional Technology Specialist at Central Heights ISD, and she is joined by Alespin Sanchez, who is one of the student social media storytellers. So welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Very excited to have you here. So Tracy, why don't you introduce yourself first, maybe share your role there at Central Heights, and then I'll I'll kick it over to Alespin. Okay. Um, like Andrea said, my name is Tracy McCown. Um, this is my third year in this position. Uh, previously, before I entered this spot, I taught middle school technology and elementary technology for 20 years. And so my role, um, I wear many hats like most people do at schools. One of my big roles is our social media platforms. We run Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, I also monitor all of our website. Um, I monitor all of our communications with parents. And we just recently added some new LED. We have a new LED sign. And so that's been added to, to my agenda also. So I do a lot of other things, but as far as social media goes, those are our two main focuses right now. Okay, so Instagram and Facebook are kind of your primary. YouTube, you put longer videos, I'm assuming on. Right. Do okay. a lot of live live feeds on YouTube and okay. um, post stuff after events. Okay. And you've been in your position for three years. Um, we've gotten to know each other through our membership group. So I, I appreciate yes. that. And that's where I learned about this program. I'm, I'm like, Tracy, you need to be on my podcast. <laughs> um, and I'm super excited that Alespin has been able to join us. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you know, uh, what year are you? What are you kind of working on in regards to social media there at Central Heights? Okay, so I'm a junior in Central Heights. I have, this is my first year being a tech aide, helping Ms. McCown out with stuff. I actually have been enjoying it a lot. And I thought that I would never find out more things that I knew, but I know a lot more now. And I enjoy, I'm kind of shy person. So I kind of, like involving myself in the school and I like it that it doesn't have to be face-to-face. -face. I can like help communicate to the community within just a click really. Like you share something and everybody can hear it. And so I am glad to say that I'll be joining next year because I really do like it. And so I just, mm, I really do pride myself in this. This is kind of one of a hobby, not a hobby, but something that I wouldn't see myself really into, but I really do like it. I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So what's your title, Alespin? I am a tech aide. Um, tech aide, okay. Yes. And is that like a class during the day? Um, Tracy, maybe you can describe a little bit about how the program works. Sure. So we, there are three of us that are on the technology department. We have one um, man who's housed down at the elementary and then myself and our tech director were housed up here at the middle school and high school. Our campuses are together. They're separated, but together. And so our school offers a program for juniors and seniors. They can request to sign up to be a tech aide, an office aide, or a library aide. And so I oversee our tech aides. And we, we kind of handpick our tech aides. 
um, because they are, you know, they get, they're privy to a lot of private information. They kind of get to see the backside of technology and with our network and stuff like that. And so, so we kind of handpick our kiddos. So we currently have five. Okay. I have um, three seniors and two juniors. And so my two juniors this year happen to be two girls and they have both been invited to return next year and they both said yes. And so I, I've already recruited. I've got two sophomore guys that I've already committed for next year. And so our tech aides, um, we get them. It's an it's, it's a class. They get a grade. It's a pass or fail. We've never had anybody fail so far. And so they come, they check in with my office each day. So we have them for 45 minutes and they are great. They just do whatever we need them to do. So they do a, they do a lot of social media graphics, reels, videos, but they also do preparing for testing, troubleshooting. We teach them how to repair a Chromebook. Um, so they learn a lot and we learn a lot from them. So, yeah. And how long have you had this type of program? Has it been quite a few years? It has been quite a few years. Um, but prior to me moving into this position, our tech department was one person. And so back in those days, it was just kind of one or two here or there. And because it was a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one work, we never had females tech aides. And so when I came on, I said, we need to get the girls involved. Girls can do this too. Mm -hmm. And so, so now we have a mix. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. We're, we're recording this in March and I think uh, March is women's history month. So it's great. Hey, there we go. Great that you <laughs> brought women's day Friday. Yeah. Um, so social media, um, uh, Elizabeth, why don't you tell me like what kind of things are you doing on social media? Maybe what kind of training have you gotten? Uh, how does all that work? So I kind of already knew basics of social media. I don't think I'm a social media girly because I don't really post a lot, but I do know a lot about it because I feel like I just kind of I don't know how to say it, but if I want to know something, I kind of have to figure it out my own. So I always mess around with settings. So I know a concept of general settings, like app settings and stuff like that. So within here, I put those skills to use with creating reels or graphics. And then I can also, I help out with um, technology with um, microphone setup sometimes. And then I help base the computers when they're troubleshooting we we wash them out is that what it's called yeah, and so we reset wash. them power <laughs> wash them and so um that's what we do and then I do reels based on anything everything it can be from the elementary campus up to middle school campus high school campus it's everywhere so that's why I really like it because I don't just focus on one thing but if it if anything it's rather everything even like yeah. outside news can be brought into our school news and so I can probably create a graphic for this or something like a video to spread it out. So that's what I do in basically okay. my basements. Okay. So if you are going to go and highlight something with a uh, reel uh, at the elementary school, is that something that uh, gets assigned by Mrs. McCowan or is it something, maybe an idea that you have, or is it a teacher request? Do you know how that works? So most of the times it will kind of be Miss McCown's ideas because I we can't really just request to go to the elementary, but I kind of love going to the elementary. So our ideas are kind of, if it's like a event, we kind of do go down there to get the, like a book fair. We recently did book fairs. And then she also, if we have ideas, she more than enough, we bring her ideas. I even created a homecoming rule because that was my idea. So she gives us creative freeness to do anything you know she lets us try stuff out she lets us use our music our kind of editing skills so she's really open with this okay that is incredible um because you guys have great ideas so yeah um Tracy how and does it oh go ahead well I was just going to say sometimes they actually are the ones taking the pictures and taking the videos but oh. our teachers are phenomenal at sending me pictures so Sometimes I will, you know, download the photos and we have a, we have a school phone um, that our tech aides have access to. I, I, I kind of check it out to them. And so I may handle my phone and go, hey, there's, you know, 12 new pictures from an activity on the playground. Can you create a reel? And they just grab it and go. So sometimes we use our yearbook photo staff. 
you know, the pictures they took. And then most of the time, probably 85% of the time, our tech aides are taking the actual photos and the videos. Okay. So you've got a school mm -hmm. phone that they can use and then they can uh, like edit and everything right on the app. And then are they, yes. are they sharing it themselves or are you the final person that kind of pushes publish? So, so in the fall, when we kind of first started this, I kind of said, create it and let me view it first. And I gave them a lot of feedback. You know, I said, you know, this is hard to see or your color contrast is not good. And so, but now this spring, um, most of my tech aides, I still have one or two that I want to see their work before they publish it. But three of my five, they have full ability. They can hit that publish and push it out to Facebook and Instagram at the oh. same time. And then they'll come tell me, okay, I just pushed it. And so then I grab my phone real quick and I take a peek. You know, and that way I could edit it quickly if we needed to, but I haven't had to. Okay. <clears throat> that is great. Um, so what are some of the favorite stories? I mean, uh, Elispin, you said you really love going down to the elementary classroom. Is there a favorite story or reel or event that you've gotten to cover that you could kind of walk me through and, and let me know what, how you did it and how you put it together? So I think for that one would probably be our Christmas decorating contest. Okay. And this was <laughs> probably my favorite one because it was kind of tricky. So I liked it because I learned new stuff with and doing it. And so this one was a video and it had, it also had photos. It had graphics moving. It had, um, um, what was it called? It had like a video within a photo. So it was okay. kind of like you base out the format and you put in the video. And so I say that was my favorite because I got to go well, not really down to the elementary, but around the school campuses, take photos and just to see kind of how creative they were with it. And so me being able to make something out of it for everyone else to see is kind of like fun, you know, like nobody, like people outside of our school wouldn't see the decorations if it wasn't for someone making a video, you know? So I right. kind of like doing that and being able to, to kind of spread it, you know, just to yeah. get everything out. Mm -hmm. What did you use to edit all of those things together because you mentioned videos and photos and moving graphics and videos within a photo like how did you edit that together this one was actually all within canva canva okay. has been my best friend with this with this tech aid and i feel like canva really does give you a lot to do with so i really enjoy working on canva yeah and our listeners do too elizabeth so they're going to be really <laughs> excited that you mentioned canva <laughs> Um, because, been, what is that other app that you really like for Instagram? Um, that is CapCut. Okay. And so that okay. app, yes. Yeah. That yeah. is a Alespin favorite. has taught me a lot of stuff because she really came in with a lot of knowledge that I didn't have. And so, so she's really showed me a couple, there's another app that's on our phone too. I don't remember what that other one is called. Mm. I think I know which one you're talking about. I yeah. think it was a student has the phone software. right now, so I can't pull it up. So it's in his hands. <laughs> I, I got to share the best way of rent, of lending out a, a, you know, anything valuable like a phone. I don't know, Tracy, what you take, but our superintendent at our school, he takes their phone because then, yeah, you know, that, trade. you know, that you're going <laughs> to get whatever you gave him back. He's, he gives yeah. out his keys. If they, he, they've got to borrow his keys, he's like, okay, give me your phone. And they're like, what? And it's like, I need my keys back and I'm sure you want your phone back. So I like Absolutely. that little, little hack. Um, okay. And CapCut is one that um, some of my students use too. I have a social media internship program that we're working at uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, that's, that's a great one. So what Tracy has been the impact that having these tech aids involved with social media how has it impacted your social media presence? So when we started the school year, you know, after being with you this summer, I started tracking, you know, our numbers and our Instagram followers increased by like 40%. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was huge. And so like our Facebook group is, is enormous. Like we reach a lot on Facebook, but then I started talking, especially to these tech aides. And I was like, you know, are y'all on Facebook? And they're like, not really, maybe, yes, you know, no. And so they said, Instagram is where it's at. And so as I came into this position, you know, my goal is to promote our kids and their, their, their activities and their successes. And so 
what a better place to reach them where they're at. And so we haven't dealt, we haven't delved into TikTok. I don't think our district will do that. So I feel like Instagram is our best approach. And so since these kids started pushing it out there and I give them credit, like when they create a reel, I say reel created by Elespin Sanchez. Mm -hmm. And so I think they get excited. They like to see that their friends are making videos of them. And um, so it's, it's been really good. That's, that's incredible. And Elizabeth, I'm sure you would probably agree. There's probably more, maybe more students even on TikTok, but the fact that you are producing things over on Instagram and obviously Instagram reels is like TikTok, but for Instagram, do you feel like there's a lot of students watching the content as well? That's definitely a thing because every single one of my friends have Instagram. So I know they have Instagram, they have access. And I know a lot of people coming from like, I don't know how to say it, but I know a lot of people don't follow the school account and that's their own preferences because they have a personal account, but they right. always love to look through the account. And so if it's not a follow, the engagements within looking, getting like even knowing, acknowledging it is more than enough sometimes. And so I feel like even we don't use TikTok as much or we don't even, we're not even going to use it, it's definitely okay because Instagram can reach out more, you know? And then I feel like coming out, we don't see a lot of TikTok schools, yeah. a lot of, and we have, I'm also in a journalism class and we run a TikTok account. So it's kind of, it's based on what you do, you know? So if a journalism right. TikTok account, that gets out stuff for journalism. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I just did a recent study and only 8% of the schools that responded actually use TikTok, mm -hmm. um, but 80% use Instagram. And so yeah. it's it can be really powerful. Um, Tracy, you mentioned getting staff that they submit content. And sometimes yes. my listeners will say, oh, it's just really hard to get content from staff because they're always busy. So what have been some of your strategies to help encourage staff to, to get you stories and, and photos and videos? Sure. Um, you know, when we started the school year, I really tried to offer them a couple different ways to send it. You know, most teachers take those pictures with their personal cell phone. So them sending a text is the easiest way. Of course, my personal phone was getting full of school accounts. So that's when we got the, the Central Heights tech phone. So I push that number so they can text that number. They can email them to me. Um, I've got a lot of teachers now that are uploading them to a Google Drive and they're just sharing that folder with me. Okay. Um, one thing we're doing right now that we started this back at the beginning of February and tomorrow is our big drawing. Um, I challenged all three campuses. I said, every time you send me pictures with a description, I will enter your name into a drawing. And my list over here, and every campus is separate. So I'm going to have a drawing for the elementary, a drawing for middle school, a drawing for high school. We're, we've got a $25 Amazon gift card that the technology department has purchased. And so my middle school is the lowest. There's probably maybe 10 on that list. But my elementary and high school, I'm probably at like 75 entries each. Since the beginning of February? Since Yeah, since about six weeks ago. So, oh my and, goodness. And when I did that challenge, I started getting pictures from teachers that have never submitted to me before. Never. And so, and I, you know, I write them back and I say, thank you so much. I've just entered your name into the drawing. And then three days later, I get another one. And they're like, did you enter me in the drawing? You know, I mean, adults are competitive, just like kids. And so I think anytime you can turn something into a competition, yeah. we get a little motivated. Right. And it's a $25 Amazon gift card. It's not like yeah. you have to give away a million dollars. Um, you, you know, some schools will even get uh, local businesses to maybe donate a gift card or something. And sometimes yeah. even a $10 coffee gift card can be enough to motivate them a little bit. And so I love it. I can't wait to hear you know, uh, about the winners you'll have to share in our membership. Group. Yeah. I'm going to do a, I'm going to put all their names on a wheel and I'm going to do a little video of yeah. it. So it'll be fun. That is incredible. So as we wrap up, what would you say is your best social media tip? So Tracy, I'm going to go to you first. What would you say your okay. best social media tip is? 
Um, I think if you're in the same position that I'm in, like I'm a district, I, I cover the districts. So I've got an elementary campus, middle school campus, high school campus. I think it's real easy to get caught up in athletics and having lots and lots and lots of athletic posts. And I try with my team, we try really hard to cover everything, you know, from kids playing on the elementary playground to the elementary book fair, to the, the chess team going to competition. Our ag department's phenomenal. So we try to push them a lot. You know, um, we have a fishing club at Central Heights and nobody knows that. And so we push their stuff. I think trying to just hit every every little group, every little club, giving everybody a little shout out, you know, and that's with your your school staff too, you know, honoring your cafeteria workers, your resource, your school resource officers, your admin, your school board. I just think, and it's a lot of work. And you know, Andrea, it's a lot of time, but it's worth it when you people come back to say, thank you so much for recognizing my group or my kids or, you know, the project we were doing. And so that's why I'm thankful for my five students, because if I didn't have them, I don't know that I could cover it as well. Yeah. I really think, um, I just love these conversations. So I'm doing a internship program that's no, no credit and it's not paid at all. But I'm thinking next year, if I create, especially our, our seniors seem to have some get, some openings for in some of their trimesters. So I'm just thinking about a pass fail um, and being able to get them incorporated because, you know, when I hear you say, hey, we want to make sure we cover all of those. Right. I'm sure it's a lot easier for you because you'll be like, hey, let's go out you know, Elizabeth or, or one of your other techs, um, you know, go out and cover this, this group. Maybe you're doing a little interview, maybe you're sharing a picture with a little caption or something, but that, that probably makes it easier to make sure that you get all of those covered. Yeah. And like we have TVs around our middle school and high school campus where we kind of put advertisements, for, you know, promoting things. And so what I've done with the kids is I've assigned them a sport. I've assigned one kid school holidays. I've assigned another kid, you know, picture days and stuff like that. And so that the menu. And so that's their responsibility to make sure those slides are updated every day or every other day they create the graphics. And now with our LED screen, you know, those are actual videos animated. And so um, I've recruited two of them to help me with that just to kind of get it started. Okay. So. Yeah, it's a great way. And I'm assuming once you provide them a little bit of training, most of them are pretty independent then and you can just kind of give them assignments and they they take it and run yes. with it. Yeah, like in the fall, you know, we all watch together. I found some really good Instagram basics, YouTube videos. I required them to sit and watch them. They had to, you know, give me feedback. What did you learn? Um, Canva was new to our students and, you know, it's, some of two of my tech aides kind of fight it. They still want to stay in Google Slides. And I'm like, no, let's get in Canva. Let's let's take it a step further. And so they've all come a long way. Everybody's progressed. And like Alespin said, Canva's our best friend, like it is probably for everybody that does social media. So yeah, definitely. Alespin, would you have a favorite social media tip, especially from the student's perspective of being involved in this that you could share with the listeners? I definitely think it's kind of, I'm going to say it's based on the person too. If you're not interested, you don't want to know about it. Like if I were to be kind of mm, about it, then I feel like I wouldn't, my work wouldn't be the same as kind of like more motivation. I don't have it, you know? And yep. so I feel like with this, I kind of put like my, like myself into them. So mm -hmm. For like from my kind of perspective it's like I kind of know what the teenagers like these days like what kind of editing they like what kind of music they like so if I kind of have something in charge I kind of want to put it more not modernized but kind of where I can attract like the youngers attraction you know so I kind of just put my I'm kind of say like if I wanted to watch something really bad I'm kind of making it that way so I wanted to check to everybody else you know yeah and Mrs. McCown, she helps encourage that, right? Yes, yes. And more than enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for you to be able to have that creative outlet um, in a way that's not on your own channel, but it's for the school, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there was a little bit of a learning curve, 
but I'm so proud that you're leaning into that. And yeah, you definitely wouldn't want this job. Uh, maybe you'd want to be the office aide or the uh, library aide if you don't really like creating things like this. But even for you, um, with maybe more of a shyer personality, um, I'm sure it's allowed an outlet for you that maybe you didn't even know was there, right? It definitely has. And actually, Miss McCown was my middle school technology teacher. Oh. So I also learned a lot from her, especially her Google Classroom, well, not her Google Classroom, from her Google slide days where she would make us make shapes within or like animals within the shapes. I don't think I've ever forgotten anything from Google slides. If anybody was to ask something for Google slides or Google docs, I would be the one to go help them because I already knew. So I actually, I was kind of surprised to find out again that I was placed in tech aid with Ms. McCown because her trips, her tips were kind of what got me through them as well. So she actually yeah. taught me a lot. She she never, she never tells me no. She's like, if I had said something, she was gonna let me, gonna like, not, not that she doesn't tell me no, but she kind of lets me express it in a way yeah. she knows I want to. So she gives yeah. me a lot of freedom within that and I can express it within the school, like you said. And so when I know that it's open to school and students together, sometimes students kind of want to get away from school, but if it's kind of, if it's your group, your stuff being promoted, your stuff being shown, you kind of want to put more into it. So that lets us get us more from it and gets um, um, gets us to pass through the, the imagination we have because right. it just opens a lot of doors. For me, yeah. that doesn't like talking to people. I can like go and just take their pictures and leave and get it all done for them. And they, they'll just be able to see what I created, you know? So I really yeah. do enjoy that part. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, great job. Tracy, some of our listeners might have some uh, questions. What's the best way to stay connected to you? Um, I, I'm probably still old school. So my email is probably going to be the best way. Okay. Um, I, I used to be on Twitter X. Now I'm, I've got too much other stuff, you know, to okay. follow that. Of course they could message through our Central Heights ISD Facebook page or our Instagram page. Okay. Uh, so, so we're going to link all of the um, social media channels for your district on the show notes. And then we'll also have Tracy's email address there. So if you have additional questions for Tracy, please reach out. Um, and if you have questions for Elispin, you could uh, route those through Tracy and uh, they'll, they'll help get those answered. Um, great job. I'm so excited about what you are doing uh, for your school district and the stories that you're able to tell and the experiences you're creating for these tech aides. Any last parting words of advice um, before we say goodbye? I say just don't be scared. Try it. I've pushed stuff out there and I think it looks great. And two days later, I'll be like, oh, that's not very good. But you know, you got the message out there. I don't think you can do it wrong. You just got to keep trying and keep adding to it. Definitely. How about you, Elispin? Definitely within that too, like mistakes are okay. If you didn't like something, you can always have another project. And then I feel like definitely the mistakes is what makes me get better. They, they, I learned from them. So yeah. that's definitely one thing. And I've been doing social media for 10 years and I still make mistakes. Um, I've probably made every mistake in the book um, between, uh, you know, what type of picture you post. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was in the background or right. misspelling a name or misspelling, you know, a word or, or whatever. Um, but we, we've got to do the work. We're human, um, but we're all learning. And I think that authentic storytelling is really special. And it's just great to see that your reach uh, you, you know, your Instagram channel is growing for your community. So I'm so proud of your efforts. So great job, ladies and great job team. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And next week, we'll be back with another fabulous guest. Um, we'll actually have I think Miss Leslie Brewington is joining us and we're talking a special uh, episode all about crisis communication. So join back next week. And until then, just keep telling those stories. Bye ladies. Bye. 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 Yeah.